I would like to start with a story that seems to be about elephants, but in fact it is about epistemology and ontology. When I was a student, we would love to go out camping and hiking and canoeing and so on. And usually we would sit down in the evening to chat or tell big stories. And one of my best friends is Jan van der Ploeg. And he was the best storyteller of all of us. He would sit down and talk for hours. And we always assumed that he made stories up. But the story I'm going to tell you now is a story he told us one evening sitting at the campsite. And it's a story about his field work in the northern part of Cameroon. In the northern part of Cameroon, as you probably know, the drought can be extreme. And due to that, there is a pressure on land. Pastoralists, nomadist herders, and farmers, small-scale peasants, fight a bit about the land. And they both want access to the land, and they are in kind of conflictual situation about that land. And Jan was doing research there. He did participant observation. So what he did was traveling around with the pastoralist and their herds and sit for some months with the farmers or with the peasants on their lands and he helped them on their fields. And the story I'm going to tell you is the story Jan told us at the campsite. It's a story that occurred while he was doing his field work among the peasants. In the night, it was really, really quiet. Nobody heard anything. But in the morning, Jan was woken up by outrageous peasants. They were screaming. They were crying. They were tremendously mad. And why? Because their land was destroyed by a herd of elephants. And Jan was obviously shocked because these peasants were on the brink of starvation anyhow and now their land or part of their crop was destroyed by elephants. And Jan thought, okay, how can this happen and, and what happened exactly? But these peasants, they were really sure. They were without any doubt. They said those elephants were not real elephants. Those elephants that destroyed these beautiful crops, those elephants were the pastoralists, the nomadic herders. They had transformed themselves using magic. It's the northern part of Cameroon. They used magic and transformed themselves into elephants and then stepped on our land and then ruined it. So they became really angry and they took up their weapons. And Young, who also did participant on observation among the pastoralists, went quickly to wildlife foundations to, to find out, do you have any tracking systems on these elephants? And can I prove that these were simply elephants and not my pastoralist friends? But the foundation did have a tracking system, but the elephants came out of nowhere. They were not part of the tracking system. They came out of nowhere and they left into nowhere. They disappeared, they vanished. So the question may arise, what happened here? What happened here with these angry elephants? What happened here in reality, we can say? Think about this. What we can say, for instance, is, well, the herd of elephants is simply an unregistered group and just quickly disappeared. And the registration of the Wildlife Foundation was simply incomplete. It's a possibility. Seems pretty logical. But maybe this happened in reality. The herd of elephants are actually the pastoralist in the shape of elephants, so transformed and therefore unregistered, and they disappeared in thin air. It's different. But there's an also another possibility. The herd of elephants does not exist. The pastoralists have destroyed the plots of land. So there were no elephants at all. It was just the pastoralists acted as elephants, not in the shape of elephants, but acted as elephants, and then destroying the land. 
That's also a possibility. But what other possibilities are there? Are there more options? Of course there are more options. We can also think of these peasants as storytellers. They told Jan the story that their crop was ruined by the pastoralists, so they had a reason to go out and fight. But remember I told you Jan was a great and is a great storyteller. So maybe this whole story is a figment of Jan because he was the best storyteller of all of us. Could also be that I made up this story. It's a figment of me. Are there more options? Of course there are more options. There are many more options because we can also rephrase the question a, li a little bit and then um, say, well, whatever really happened does not matter. Because if the peasants define the destruction by magical elephants as real, it is real in its consequences. And sociologists among you will know who I paraphrase here. We could also say, well, the story is not true. You all imagine that I told you a story. Or we could say, well, the story is not true because we cannot know true reality. Now, all these questions relate to the idea of reality. What is reality? And second, can we know reality? And that's where I want to pose a few questions about as well. Because how can we get to know what happened? Can we get to know what happened? And how can we? And that's epistemology. And one way we can uh, answer this question is by saying, well, we have to find a decent explanation. We have to find a decent explanation for the magic occurring, for instance. Or we need empirical evidence. Empirical evidence of what? Well, of the elephants. And the magic can only be proven when we have uh, evidence of the transformation of the pastoralist. We, maybe we need eyewitnesses or CCTV or whatever. And others would say, well, no, we need empirical evidence as well as explanations. So we can only know for sure when we get an empirical ev evidence of the elephants. And magic can only be proven when we have both evidence of the transformation and we are able to explain it. Otherwise, we're just looking at magicians. Are there more options? Of course there are more options. We have to find as much evidence as possible to prove the guiltiness of the pastoralist, one could say. How can we get knowledge? Well, by proving guilt. But we can also try to prove the innocence. And that's a different way of looking. The innocence uh, of the pastoralist. Simply track the pastoralist. Maybe they were far, far away. But then still the question of magic remains. We can also say, no, we need to measure how deep the footprints are. And maybe we have to look at the, the elephant dung to determine whether it was real elephants or magical elephants. Maybe, maybe we just have to think very carefully, sit and ponder. Are there more options? Of course there are. Maybe we need to feel empathy, repose the question and then see whether we can really understand from inside, from in depth, these pastoralists or these peasants, I mean. Or we could say, no, we have to do something completely different. We have to search for comparable stories about vanishing elephants or about the use of magic in conflict. And again, there are even more options because we do not need to try to find out what happened or how it happened, but why it happened. We have to find the reason for it. We have to try to explain it. Whereas others would say, no, 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 not at all. We do not need to find out why it happened. We need to find out how these peasants interpreted it or how these, these pastoralists interpreted it. Now, all these options I explained were options that dealt with either ontology or epistemology. And if you want to find out what epistemology and ontology are about, and if you want to try to grasp what I was just telling you about these elephants, you really need to watch the other lectures on ontology and epistemology.